Hey, welcome back, everyone, and happy Monday to all of the options traders out there in our group. And a question that I've been getting a lot during these high volatility markets, should I buy back short calls at a loss during high volatility? It's a tempting thing to do, but unless you're really focused on what the obligations are and the reason for doing the strategy, it's usually a bad idea. So let's find out why. Before we get started, as always, please click like. Definitely appreciate it and seeing those numbers starting to pick up. It's going a long way into promoting the channel. So first off, why would we be selling calls, especially during high volatility? Well, selling calls, or puts for that matter, brings in premium. You get paid for being the seller. And that cash that you receive creates a limited downside hedge. It's limited to the amount of cash that you receive. So if you grab five bucks from the sale of a call, you've got a $5 downside hedge, and that's it. If you sell it for seven, you've got a $7 downside hedge. So that's what it means to be a limited downside hedge. So that's one reason why traders will sell options. They want to receive some money, and maybe they were willing to hold these shares of stock anyway, but it at least gives them some cash, gives them some returns, and reduces that downside risk a little bit. Another reason for selling calls is that traders will often sell them to buy protective puts. So during high volatility, of course, the price of the puts are just going through the roof and traders are saying, well, I'd really like to buy these puts, but I don't want to spend 30 or 40% volatility. Well, if the puts are priced high, so are the calls. Let's sell the calls, take some of that cash and buy some puts. And this is a strategy that we've talked about before called a collar. So again, these are the, really the two basic reasons for selling calls in high volatility environments. So if you have shares of stock by themselves, this is your risk graph. This is, let's say, 100 shares of stock purchased for 100. And so our break-even point right there where the blue line crosses this zero line, it's where we break even, it shows that we've purchased it for 100. But let's say that we sell a 105 call for five bucks. If we do that, we have moved from the blue line to the red. We create our bend right there at the 105 strike. And notice that we have now sharply reduced the amount that we could make to the upside. This red line is now flattened out at plus 10. And that's because we could make another five points of capital gain. Remember, we bought the stock for 100 we have the potential obligation to sell those shares for 105 for that strike. That's five points. But we also got paid five bucks for it. So that's a total of 10. And that's why this red flat line right there is lining up right at 10. But because we also received $5, this blue line is shifted to the left by $5. That's the $5 downside hedge I was talking about. And that's why our new risk graph here, this red one crosses zero at 95. It's $5 lower than where it used to. But if the stock continues to fall below 95, we are definitely heading into losses. But we can also see, based on the graph, that the red line sits higher than the blue, at least for all of this region in here. So had we not sold that call, we would have a bigger loss on the blue line. See, if we were on this red line, we would just be breaking even with the stock at 95. But if we just held the shares without selling the call, we'd be down five points. See, that $5 premium that we received has come to our rescue. But beyond that, we're going to start continuing to take losses. Now, the second reason we said for selling calls was to sell the calls and then buy the puts. And if we do that, we have gone from the blue to the black line. Now, in this case, we are giving up even more of the upside gains. And that's because we are taking some of the cash that we received and we're using it to buy a put. Now, in exchange for that, we have sharply reduced the amount we could lose down here. That's why this black line flattens out down here. So many of you will recognize this risk graph in black as a vertical spread. This is just another way to construct it, buying the stock, selling the calls, and buying the put. But the point is, is that if you are taking that cash from the sale of the calls and buying the put, it's going to tighten up these ranges even more because we don't have as much cash to show for it, but we do have an insurance policy. So whether you are selling calls just by themselves, covered call, 
or whether you are selling calls to buy the puts, the question that we want to answer in this video is, should you be buying back these calls or closing out these positions just because they're at a loss? Well, let's take a look at just the calls by themselves. Here's the position that we first talked about where you sold the 105 call for five bucks. And maybe it's got 30 days to expiration. Well, let's say that five days later, the volatility gets jacked up and now this option is trading for nine bucks. So if you were able to sell it now, yes, you would have $9 cash instead of five. And that line would be shifted higher. Well, the fact is you didn't. Your hedge is always limited to the amount of cash that you received. But here's where traders make mistakes. They'll say, oh, I sold this option for five on this red curve. And now I see it trading up here for nine. I don't want to get into a bigger loss. I should close it out. But think about what's causing that loss. It's not that the stock is going against you. It's just that volatility is hiked. The stock is probably way down here, which is probably the reason for that volatility getting jacked up. You have almost no chance of that option going in the money. There's virtually nothing to worry about. And yes, it might be a $9 obligation right now. But if that stock stays below the 105 strike, it's going to be a $0 obligation. There's no reason to fear it. There's no reason to put yourself into a bigger loss just because you're seeing the price of that short option going up. Always remember where it is in relation to the current stock price. Also understand why it's getting moved up. See, it's a different story if we saw this $5 option that we sold trading for nine because the stock is way up here and it's now in the money. Well, that's obviously not what we thought was going to happen. Now we probably have a bigger decision to make about closing this out or just being okay with getting assigned and losing the shares. But that's not the case here. It's just strictly from volatility. And the main thing to always remember is that at expiration, all of that extrinsic value must go to zero. So there's nothing to fear if the stock is well away from that strike price. Instead, just continue holding the option and let time take its course. And so for anyone who'd like to learn more about the art and science of options trading, please check out the Alpha Trader course, Strategy Lab, and a technical analysis course. You can find it all at optionsa-z.com. Also, please join us on the Facebook trading group, Options A to Z, and you can find a link in the description below.